is uh, in this figure, the force magnitude is now at 85 Newton. Then the angle between this vector and this is known, and that's 30 degrees. Then angle between this and the y axis is known as 45 degrees. So, this is the case where you have the force magnitude and it's given two different angles. You have the angle between the force and a, a line which is on X or Y plane. Or what you did was you took this point, you dropped it perpendicular on this plane and this, this here represents the projection of this force on x or y plane. So we know the angle between the force and its projection on the x or y plane. Then we know the angle between the force and its projection and between the y axis. So this whole thing is going to be similar to case two. And it's not identical, it's not exactly the same angles, but it's going to be similar to case two. And the question is the same again, you want to represent the force F in Cartesian vector four. So that part doesn't change, it's looking at the same kind of problem. Now, as I said, this, this whole thing is similar to the case 2. So, <coughs> first you have to identify the components. Because if you want to write a force in work of vector, the equation is F equals F X I F yj and fck. So with the same equation, we are still looking for the magnitude of these x, y, z components. So if I go back to the diagram, then if you take this here, and if I drop a perpendicular on negative c direction, then the perpendicular is going to show up somewhere here. And it's going to be parallel to that. So it should look like this. With your force is 85 meters. So that really the parallelogram. This is the parallelogram we are considering. And <coughs> among this, that's the direction for the Z component. And that's also going to be the same thing as this, and the same thing as the Z component. So, <coughs> we need to look at this triangle. And if I so you draw that triangle, then this side represents the Z component, then here we have the force, then this arrow is going to represent FH, or the projection of the force on X or Y plane. This angle here is going to be 30 degrees. Uh, and the angle here is 90, which is the same here as 90. And I can see that I can write FC from the triangle. That will be the magnitude, 85. You're looking at the side, so we're going to use sine, and this becomes sine 30. The only thing you need to account for is that this C component is going in the negative C direction. 
instead of going up, it's going down. So that's the counter force by attaching a negative sign. Then the H component will be 85 the magnitude and then we get cosine of 30. That gives you the horizontal component. <coughs> then we go one more step. So now we're going to take the horizontal component and then divide that up into two components, one along the x-axis and one along the y-axis. So the easiest way to do that will be we take this arrow, which is along the y-axis, then you take this arrow, which is parallel to the x-axis. Or, <coughs> to look at it a little bit different like this, if I complete the parallelogram in x o y plan, then this is going to be the x component. This here is going to be the y component, which is similar to this. See? The second parallelogram is in X O Y plane. And as a, you could either use this triangle or you could use this triangle. They will be the same. If I use the one at the top, your diagram is going to look like this. You'll have F Y going this way. You have <coughs> F H coming along that line. And then you're going to have F X coming in that direction, where this angle being 45 degrees, this is being Fx. So I'm redrawing the same triangle in the light of the situation that you're going to look at this plane in the Z direction. So from this, you know, this angle is going to be 90. And on this figure, it's going to be the same angle as 90. Then, the Fx magnitude of the x component will be Fh. Look at this, so I could use the sine 45. Then I could say Fy, that's going to be Fh. And then you have cosine of 45. So those are the xy components in terms of the ejected force Fx. And we already know Fx from here. So I could make that substitution and we get 85 cosine 30 and sine 45. Then on here, we go 85 cosine 30. Uh, that's the FH part. We multiply it by cosine 45. So <coughs> this equation here that gives you the magnitude for x component. <coughs> this equation here gives you the magnitude for the y component. And uh, this equation here gives you the magnitude for the component. And again, uh, if you look at this case here, you're dealing with two sets of forces. One is the force itself, and then you're dealing with the component of that force along a plane, <coughs> instead of working through an axis. So once you get the component along the plane, then you can take two more components along x and y. But if I add something to it, we could say that, that we want to find direction angles for the force F. I mean, we add that part to this problem that we also want to find the direction angles, which means we're looking at the angles alpha, beta, and gamma. And it's not that hard to find that, because if I look at the effect, the Fx came out to be 
85 cosine 30 sine 45. This is also equal to f cosine alpha from case 1. That also equals 85 cosine alpha. Then fy came out to be 85 cosine 30 cosine 45 and from the equations we have it's going to be f cosine beta and that will be 85 cosine beta. Finally, I mean if you take the last equation, you go fc, that's negative 85 sine 30, that is really equal to f cosine gamma, which is the same thing as 85 cosine gamma. So those are the three equations which involve the angles alpha, beta, and gamma. 85 basically gets cancelled from both sides. So from the first equation, I can say that alpha equals cosine inverse of cosine 30 and sine 45. <coughs> and that's going to be 52.3 degrees. Then we go to beta, that's going to be another cosine inverse. And we're looking at cosine 30, cosine 45, and this should be the same number as 52.3. Then the last one, which is gamma, that will be cosine inverse of negative sine 30. And if you go to the answer calculations, that will come out to be 120 degrees. So, <coughs> when that is an additional step where you can find the actual angles, the course <coughs> makes with x, y, and z axis. Okay, any questions on this?